Hello and uh, welcome to another session of One in the Spirit, a program in which we talk to some interesting people and groups in at Orleans United Church. My name is David Clemens and I'm really pleased to be hosting this session. And today I've got a real special treat for you. We're going to be talking with David Patterson who is known as the voice of audio video here in Orleans United Church and at the Ottawa Presbytery and at the m and Conference. So this is not his only involvement, but we want to concentrate on some of the other work uh, that he does at another time. Like he's involved with the worship committee and he's been involved with the scouts. He's a lay worship leader and he's a representative to uh, the Audible Presbytery for the church. But today we really want to talk about audiovisual. So thank you very much for doing this, David. Thanks very much, Dave. So let's start off with uh, where, you're, where you're from originally. Actually, I was born in Moncton, New Brunswick, and was basically brought up at Central United Church. That was my second home. Wow. Oh, fantastic. So what brought you here to Ottawa? Well, actually, I was transferred here. Um, I was and have retired as a civilian member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police doing communications work. And so uh, all the two-way radio systems and eventually closed-circuit television and then into audiovisual production within the federal government. So... Uh, I've had a great time. We uh, actually we transferred here from Red Deer, Alberta, and I had been previously in Montreal and Moncton working for the RCMP, and uh, actually still under a contract with the RCMP. You've been a long member of this church, uh, haven't you? You're almost one of the founding members. Well, actually, it was interesting that uh, we uh, we were part of Queenswood, and we we moved when our uh, mortgage came up down here, and. Uh, the question was asked, um, how do you start a uh, United Church? And we, the first person I met the first day I was on the bus was the Reverend uh, Dave Esty, who mm -hmm. was the chaplain general. And uh, the discussion began then, and uh, come January uh, the following year, uh, we were had our first church service at Kareem Wilson High School, and uh, we shared the facility with the Andigans. So we set up at uh, 9 o'clock, and then they moved in at 10 o'clock. And so it was uh, quite, quite an experience. Now, you've been working with audiovisual for a very long time at this church in particular. I mean, you helped to design this system that we've got here today. Um, in your opinion, what sort of things uh, has the audiovisual ministry uh, offered to us here at Orleans United Church? Well, of course, we started off with the sound system, and we have... Uh, very, the actual board that I'm using right now was the board that uh, I bought and installed. Um, my son and I actually did all the wiring with Jamie, and uh, so we wired this entire facility with speakers in all the classrooms and in the facility here. And uh, some people that I had worked with in the past uh, as suppliers, uh, Panasonic mainly, uh, provided this, this was the top board at, at his time. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's analog. And now we want to uh, improve the facility here so that we get better sound coverage, better intelligibility, and the ability to do multi-channel recording. So I would, you know, like to turn this into a recording studio where we can continue to do outreach work uh, music-wise and through worship. So uh, over the years, there's been a lot of changes here, hasn't there? Um, well, within the uh, the congregation, you mean, or with technology? Well, with the technology, yeah. Well, the technology, yes. Uh, there has uh, been, um, I guess, because of my concern. I'm I'm a visual person, and a lot of what I was doing within the government was uh, projection, and so I eventually was able to get some equipment in here, and we do project uh, the entire bulletin with all the hymns, the words. Uh, we show videos, we do a number of things using audiovisual uh, projection within the sanctuary, and we are also able to uh, extend it out into the chapel and into the narthex so that we are using visual communication. We all learn uh, more by visual uh, along with the word, and so as to try to improve our communications capability within the service and our outreach. And our, I'm hoping that in time, uh, we will be able to do video streaming. If you just think back a number of years ago, uh, for a church to even have a website was something a bit radical. Mm -hmm. And we were one of the first. And Dan Hayward, uh, one of our students who became an ordained minister, 
uh, developed it. That's what he used to do before he became a minister. And so uh, the day will come probably when every church will have video streaming capability to allow God's message to leave the sanctuary out into the world to the sick and shut-ins, to those in the local community, and also into places around the world. We can do uh, weddings, we can do funerals, special events, whatever. And we have done on occasion where we've had people over in England uh, be able to see events here. Mm -hmm. And I'm working closely with the uh, Presbytery and MNO Conference where we do a fair amount of visual communications. So it's, uh, it's sort of a passion with me at this time. <laughs> so now you're always looking for volunteers to come and help you. Yes, I'm looking for people who are keenly interested, um, who have uh, uh, some background knowledge. It's always great. Uh, we just don't need button pushers. I need people who are creative. And uh, so that uh, when it comes to slide changes or trying to make everything sound better, it does take a little bit of work. So uh, it's the people who are keenly interested. We're always looking for volunteers uh, of every age. Now, is there any special qualifications required? No, just keenly interested to do a good job and to be, uh, uh, allow the best pickup uh, microphone-wise, placing things correctly, and to be able to control the system. As the, our ministers say, I can turn them on and I can turn them off. <laughs> and so you just need to know when to do it. Well, I suppose it's uh, kind of successful you got me involved in this. Oh, now. yes. Well, actually, <laughs> because of your computer background, uh, you were the one that introduced us with the capability of being able to record all their services. We do record everything, and we make the services available uh, on CDs, and we also uh, take the, uh, the sermon content, and uh, I edit it down and send it off to Michelle Hansen, who takes care of our website, and all the sermons are up there so that if you happen to miss the service or you want to share the information from a service with a uh, loved one across the country, you can just give them the link and then they can tune in. And so it's outreach which is uh, allowing us to, to do all this. And I think we should give a shout out to Michelle who's done a lot of work here as well. Well, yes, as I said, we started off with Dan Hayward many years ago and Michelle who uh, does this as, as a, uh, um, a full-time job uh, within the government and her capability and creative uh, abilities has allowed us to be probably one of the best uh, church websites uh, in Ottawa. So uh, thanks to Michelle. So what do you see as the future uh, of this um, as we go down the road? What do you see in terms of the audiovisual in terms of reaching out? Okay, well the next uh, step I think uh, from a technology point of view is to replace this board with a digital board which gives us a lot of capability, uh, double the, the microphone capability, this is 16 channel, I'm looking for a 32 channel, all digital, which gives us the ability to uh, uh, do some special things with the audio to make sure things are more intelligible and more creative and allow us to uh, communicate better. And so from a technology point of view, most churches are switching from the analog technology to the digital technology, and it is quite affordable. And uh, what used to cost maybe $100,000 uh, 10 years ago, uh, we can now get a very capable uh, piece of equipment here, as long as we learn how to operate it properly, for uh, certainly under $5,000. So that's what we're looking at now. And of course, um, the, the future from my, from my perspective is being able to reach those that we haven't been able to reach at this point, and to offer um, alternatives to uh, the worship here in the sanctuary. Well, with the uh, adding video, a streaming video, uh, along with the audio that we would capture here, would allow us to reach the sick and shut-ins and, uh, and, uh, within this community. And even if, if people are not able to uh, attend the service due to a sick and shut-in uh, problem or health problem, yes, uh, you will be able to uh, be part of this congregation uh, out in the uh, Internet world. Well, David, you know, this has been incredibly fascinating. Thanks so much for taking this time to talk to us about audiovisual. Now, we do need to get together to talk about some of the other ministries that you're involved in, but I really do appreciate looking into this. And if you want some more information about uh, what David does and uh, about the audiovisual setup here in the church, 
Uh, I'll give you some coordinates on how to reach David and uh, if you can communicate with him. Uh, also, if uh, you have any suggestions for other programs or if you have comments on this, this one here, please don't hesitate to contact me. The, uh, the uh, contacts will be given to you shortly in the credits. Thanks again, David. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Dave. <laughs>